mark of the beast. Uh, but wasn't that a required to take the mark of the beast in order to buy, sell, uh, say? Oh. Uh, will that be after the, uh, uh, after we go out, after the church is gone? I hope so. <laughs> I do too, but it says if you take it, you, you're cast into hell. So if a person is saved, they, they couldn't very well take it. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the problems in prophetic teaching. Is what you got right now is, I'll put this a little bit bigger here. What you got now is a bunch of people are getting so upset by the economy and so upset by the computer system, yeah. they're trying to get you into the tribulation. Right. And what they're doing is they're spoiled and they're lazy in, in two things. Christians in America are spoiled rotten. You know, they they think of the price of gas is up. You started in the first part of Daniel's 70th week or something. <laughs> and the trouble is, the trouble is they haven't had enough persecution. They're soft. Uh, if the Lord tarries, brethren, it'll really get rough. I mean rough. I don't mean gas, $3 a gallon, although it may get there. And hamburger, $5 a, a, a pound, might get there. But that ain't what I mean by rough. I mean, that's just warming up. I mean, people over in China and Russia have had it harder. We've had it already, and they're not in any tribulation. Yeah. Tribulation hasn't come yet. We're just spoiled. That's our trouble. And so as conditions get worse, you keep having these prophetic teachers... If you keep listening to them, you'll think that everything you see in the newspaper is something getting fulfilled. And it's not. It's not. What those fellows are trying to do are trying to keep a radio broadcast on, but tickling your ears. And every new thing comes along, they've got to associate it. You know, what's next? What's next? Oh, yeah, I'm shaping up. Huh? And they get you all tied up with that thing so you're not winning souls and not passing out tracks and not taking persecution. So you have to watch them. Uh, you take that thing he's talking about now. I don't believe he's going to tribulation. One of the reasons I don't is because of what he just said. The Bible said, if any man takes that mark, he goes to the lake of fire. Now, if you're a Christian and so then go into tribulation and you take that mark, you lose your salvation. Now, for anything I understand from the New Testament epistles, it is that a Christian is secure permanently. I mean, if you could go to hell, Jesus Christ would lose part of his body. Take your Bible and come to Ephesians 5. Let me show you something. Sometimes you get too deep in the Bible, not deep enough in the Lord. <coughs> Ephesians 5. And the, the antidote, the cure for too much Bible study is street preaching and visitation. And when a kid comes out of our school, we make him do it. We believe in a cool head and a warm heart. And the way we do that thing is we get a guy down there, you know, who's really intellectual, really brilliant. We get him sometimes. We've got guys with IQ 150, you know, that turn down scholarships to Harvard. We've got all kinds. You have no idea what it's like to try to train a class where you're training commercial fishermen and bricklayers and Harvard graduates in one class. We had one guy down there so dumb he couldn't spell Bible. He spelled it B-I-B-U-L. <laughs> he flunked the second grade. You flunked the second grade, you're really stupid, you know that? <laughs> and that guy, he flunked Greek three times and finally passed it and went on. He got a fine church up in Montana and went people to Christ right and left and can handle the Greek Testament. And you get to handle those kind of things. We get a real sharp guy down there. You know what we do? We can get, make him get out in the street in the back end of a truck and act like a perfect idiot. That's good for him. Keep him balanced. <laughs> and then we get these wildfire guys down there. Bless God, glory to God, hallelujah, run the aisles, you know, whoopee, glory to God. We make him study Greek. <laughs> and that cools him, man, that cools him. Cool head, warm heart, see. Now, if a Christian could lose his salvation, it'd really be something. Because look at here. Ephesians 5, verse uh, 30. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and his bones. You're part of Jesus Christ. If you lose your salvation, Christ's body will be mutilated. It isn't going to happen. The body of Christ is not going to be mutilated. You know what that body of Christ is called? It's called a pearl of great price. Now you take an amethyst or a sardis or a jasper, one of those stones, or an ox or a barrel or one of those stones, you can take one of those stones and cut that thing in two and get you two stones. You can take a diamond and cut it in two and get two, get four, get eight. You cut a pearl in half, you ruin it. When a pearl is put, cut in half, it's no longer worth anything. You know why? Because it's one organism that came from one disease sufferer who built that thing. It's a living stone. And Christians are called lively stones. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. There isn't any chance you can lose. And the tribulation is a chance. So I don't intend to be around that thing starts. But I must admit that before it starts, you can sure get signed leading that way. And for, so right now, you're heading that way. They're putting out a little old Bank of America card now that has, uh, it has, uh, 
uh, the initials for a World Bank stamp and thing. And they got a big old computer over in Belgium called the B sitting up where they put in everybody's data and they got the thing down now where each person can take a little, for each person like say here, they can put a little old pea pod in there about an inch long and about a quarter or eighth of an inch wide and have your complete history and family history back for three generations. And they got these things where the guy pressures the button and a hundred and, you know, a hundred and thousands of a second, it takes care of 80 million digits and all that kind of thing. Big deal, you know. You know Talk about the blood of Christ, you blow every fuse in it. <laughs> and they get a thing all spinning and all this stuff, pushing the button going, and they're getting ready to get you off money. They're going to get you off cash because your cash is no good. Nothing like evolution. I mean, who are these guys at the school talking about things getting better and better when the truth is everything is just falling apart? I mean, can't, I mean, you take these people to rock and roll. What happened to rock and roll? They just ran out of stuff, so they had to put colored lights because you listen to it. <laughs> It's a downhill shot, man. It falls apart. And the color lights don't do it, then you got to roller skate to it. Well, how about stand your head and eat the banana, you know? I mean, really get the thing going. The thing is, I'll, I'll show you how human nature is. Human nature is like this. Man take drink, drink take drink, drink take man. <laughs> that's an abbreviated form. And that's a Japanese form. The Japanese have a beautiful way of saying everything, you know, in about two seconds. Like one of them came over here and watched TV and came back and they said, what was it? He said, Bang, bang. <laughs> and what he meant was everybody's either necking or killing each other on the TV. And Japanese say, man take drink, drink take drink, drink take man. Now, what does that mean? That means first the fellow takes the drink. He's in control of it. Then after his body gets adjusted to alcohol, the drink in him demands a drink. And then after he gets complete control, the drink demands the man. Now, all sin is like that. And you begin to fool around with a little thing, you don't amount to anything, and pretty soon it, you get a kick out of it, and then take something a little stronger to get you a kick. And then pretty soon the deviation can't produce it, then pretty soon perversion can't do it, and pretty soon you're in sadism and, and masochism to do it. And if you want to know what's wrong with guys like the son of Sam and Carell and Jim Jones and all that bunch, it's real easy. They just got so many kicks out of life, like Elvis Presley did, that what normally would kick them would no longer kick them. So they kept getting higher and higher kicks to finally just kick themselves in the kingdom come. That's what happened to Elvis Presley. When he died, he had the hardening of the arteries before 40. You know why? He was an old man. He was senile. The sex idol of America, senile. <laughs> he couldn't tell black from white. That's senility. He couldn't tell hot from cold. That's senility. You got a bunch of young people can't tell men from women. Well, then you're senile. <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> you got a whole bunch of young people, 18 to 19, that already burn out. They think they're hot articles out, huh? They're frozen solid, man. They're all through. And you take that bunch, they pipe the system up and pipe the system up and get used to it. Pretty soon, what turns them on don't turn them on. You have to get wilder and wilder and wilder. Now, as you get wilder and wilder and wilder, you say evolution. You see there, we can now adjust ourselves to what we couldn't adjust to before. We've learned to tolerate things and get along. When the truth is, you're going back to a monkey. See? Now, on television. Television. You know what they have to do? They have to keep getting wilder and wilder to keep the audience. Now, eventually, you've got to have new belly dancers in your living room at 10 o'clock at night. Eventually. <laughs> As a matter of fact, after you've prayed the marriage bed and the television screen for 10 years, which they've done, you've got to pull back the sheets and show the whole thing. And before they get through, they'll have to. You know why? Because you get adjusted as it goes. And the people get adjusted stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, you better know if I'm telling you the truth. I'll prophesy as sure as I'm standing here. All human nature works that way. You have to keep getting wilder and wilder to keep the congregation. That's one thing wrong with having all these all night things and quartets and stuff, see? After you've been exposed to it for years, you have to keep building up to the next act. <laughs> and after a while, you're just putting on a three ring circus, and then you have to get wilder than that, you know. I think I can no longer stand up and sing like this, you know. We have to get a hold like this, you know. <laughs> you know, you know that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> well, what's wrong? You've got a bunch of jaded idiots out there watching who's so used to anything, you can no longer turn them on, see? Now, so now, what's happened with this money? Why, well, it's very simple. The money has just lost its value and lost its value and lost its value. It isn't worth anything. <laughs> so I can give them something else. This is an improvement. Progress! 
You mean the bottom dropped out, what you mean, don't you? <laughs> I mean, in 33, Roosevelt got all your gold, took it away from me, which is against the Constitution. Mm-hmm. The Constitution says legal tender will be gold, yeah. and it's not. So Roosevelt fixed you there in 33, and then it got down to silver, and then they started putting copper in your quarters. Nobody opened their mouth. Just, I mean, you take what you're given. Copper quarters, you know, they're not silver quarters or silver half dollars. They're copper. <laughs> what does that mean? Neither worth 15 cents. You know, half dollar worth 15 cents. I got this paper money. It's worth 50 cents, 20 cents, 15 cents. Right now, that paper dollar in your pocket is worth 12 cents. Now, when the bottom drops out, New, da 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 forward progress, man is always going upward and onward. Here we go, folks, punch your card. <laughs> now, what, what, what is the answer? The truth is, the bottom dropped out. <laughs> but you see, when you say that, that's negative. And boy, folks these days just can't stand that. I mean, why be critical? Why be destructive? Well, like I told you last night, I believe in the power of negative thinking, brother. <laughs> how many people believe there is more? How many people think a, a power... An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Let me see your hands. Why, sure. Anybody in a sense believe that? The prevention is negative. The cure is positive. Negative is always stronger than positive. Is any comparison between them? <laughs> An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Negativism is always twice as good as positive. Because this Bible doesn't present a positive picture. You know what color that cover is? Black. <laughs> Black is beautiful. <laughs> All right, I hope I'm not around to come. You know what they got now? They got TV fixed up where they can watch you in your house with a television set. They got a thing going where they monitor you downtown. You know, a guy can set him up a board there. Anytime time wants to look in your living room, just turn the thing on. Whether you got the TV on or not, you know, and find what's going on in the living room. If I you have one of those things, I'd get rid of it, man. I'd put it out. Something else. Nothing like a Bible to clear up the college education.